Lord, we want to thank you and we want to praise you. We want to bless your holy name. We thank you that you gather us week after week to listen to the life-giving word. Your word brings life. Your word brings peace. Your word brings spirit to us, Lord. And so, Lord, I surrender my sisters and my brothers into your loving hands. We surrender our lives to you, our families, our children, the work we do, our ministries. Today, we surrender our intellect. So we pray that your word will sink deep down into our hearts and take deep roots in our life. So that, Lord, it will bring forth much fruit in each one of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Father, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God, brother. Praise God. Let me just share my screen. Is the screen clear? Uh, yes, brother. Yes, brother. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, dear brothers and sisters, what we want to listen to this uh, evening is uh, developing habits. Developing habits because habits, if you develop a habit, it will last and last and remain with you for good. Yeah. Because habits are very, very important in, in our walk with God, in our uh, relationship with God. If we have to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, then, then developing habits is crucial in our lives. So when you develop habits, it will change your life. It will change your life. You will get a new pattern of life. The old habit goes away. A new habit will come. Remember, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, St. Paul said this, right? If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things pass away. All things become new. Amen. Isn't it? Amen to that. See, see, this is the Christian life. The Christian life is progressive. It progresses. We don't continue to carry our habits. We don't continue to carry our negative habits or bad habits with us all our journey. No. The old must go. The new must come. The old ways of life must go. Old habits must go. Old patterns must go. New ways of life must come. New habits must come. New patterns of life must come according to the gospel. Then we will be the disciples of Jesus for the rest of our lives. That's why Jesus said, you know, in Luke chapter six, uh, Luke chapter 9, verse 62. If any man puts his hand to the plow and looks back, he is unfit for my kingdom. You see? When is it that you put your hand to the plow and never look back, never turn back, never get lukewarm, don't compromise, don't backslide? It's when habits are formed in your life. When habits are not formed, you know, uh, this, the old is still there and there is this up and down in our Christian life. Today we are good, tomorrow we are not good, today we are good, tomorrow we are not good. And we backslide, we become lukewarm. Uh, that is not the Christian life. If you want to become a disciple of Jesus, habits are crucial because habits, developing habits are crucial because habits will change your life. So, you see, as I said, habits significantly influence our lives. That's why it is so important. If you... Christianity is all about character development. You have to develop our character. And how does character develop? Habits. Because when you form habits, they influence our life. That's why to form the right habits are very, very crucial in the Christian life. Habits are patterns that are formed by repeated actions. Yeah? When I do something continuously for a long period of time, it becomes a habit. Yeah? For example, um, brushing our teeth. We have been taught from a very young age to get up in the morning and the first thing we do in the morning is to brush our teeth. Now for all of us here, it has become a habit. Nobody has to remind us, have you brushed your teeth? Why? It's a habit. Habits are like that. Habits are patterns that are formed by repeated actions. Of course, habits can be positive or negative. Yeah, we'll come to that. But at the same time, what we are talking today is positive habits, habits that bring influence in your life, habits that transform your lives and make you a, a disciple of Jesus Christ. The dictionary meaning for a habit is this, very beautiful. 
a recurrent often unconscious pattern of behavior that is acquired through frequent repetition see what the dictionary is saying it's a recurrent often unconscious pattern of behavior that is acquired through frequent uh, repetition so something that you do repetitive unconsciously at some point of time will become a habit in your life that's why it is important for us who want to become the disciples of jesus to cultivate the right habits right habits because habits ultimately will shape your life will transform your life and make you more like jesus christ colossians chapter 3 verses 9 and 10 says this beautifully since you have taken off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self which is being renewed for knowledge in the image of its creator what is paul saying paul is saying since you have taken off the old self with its practices and you have put on the new self you see brothers and sisters if you want to cultivate a new habit a, a habit according to the gospel then we have to put off the old self we have to put off something to put on something it's like this right if i want to put on a shirt i have to put off the shirt i'm wearing anything like that right i have to put off the shirt i'm wearing to put on a new thing same thing saint paul is saying if you want to put on a new habit you want to put on a new habit then what you have to do you have to put off the old self the sinful self the old habits the old attitudes yeah the old patterns of life we have to put it off through the power of the holy spirit of course we can't do it on our own nobody has power and strength to do to give up sin addiction nobody has that's why the holy spirit comes as a helper to us we need his help that's why you um, i'm happy you prayed that uh, three line prayer to the holy spirit holy spirit i love you holy spirit be my helper holy spirit take control of my life the more you pray you know the more you pray like this the holy spirit will take control of your life and do what he will kill the old self he will kill and put to death the old self old habits sinful nature old patterns whole thinkings you see he'll put to death and what will happen then you will put on the new self what is the new self the image of christ the new self of given by the holy spirit that is what the holy spirit will, uh, the, the word of god will do that's what the holy spirit will do you can put off the old self put on the new self which is being renewed you see once you put on the new self it's not the end of our journey no it is being renewed it is being transformed from the knowledge in the image of its creator amen so once you put on the new self the spirit of god will start working in our life and what will what is the work of the holy spirit to make you and to make me in the image of our creator amen praise god praise god that's what we want to become that is the ultimate goal of a christian that is the ultimate goal of a disciple to be in be like jesus christ that the holy spirit will do for us for that we need to develop the right habits how is a habit formed yeah? have a look at the screen how is a habit formed they say there are three r's in habit formation three r in habit formation one is called a reminder the second is called routine and the third is called reward yeah three r's in habit formation reminder routine and a reward some things are written there don't worry i will explain it to you remember the three r's reminder routine and reward look at this screen it i'll make it more uh, clear to you the three r's imagine if you have a headache or your your mood let's put it like this no you're feeling lousy your mood is not good you're feeling very low look at this guy in the first diagram q what's the q q is a reminder right a reminder q is a reminder like an alarm it's a reminder it reminds me when my alarm rings at 6 o'clock in the morning it reminds me time to get up right reminder q we need that so imagine this guy here sitting here yeah he is in a lousy mood not good for that is a reminder when the, such thing happens that it triggers off the next star what is the next star for this guy the next star for this guy is go to uh, go and take a good drink go to hit the bottle take a nice drink and the reward is he feels good but momentarily <laughs> there is hangovers then he can get into addiction then he can become an alcoholic you see that's how people 
get into deep uh, sinful habits. How? Through this repetitive action. It's a pattern. You keep on doing it. Every time this guy feels bad, feels low, feels lousy, goes to the bottle. Matter of time, he will become an alcoholic. Initially, if he's, ah, I feel nice, I feel good. Now I'm feeling uh, good. That mood is gone. No, no, they're temporary. But look at the, um, to, uh, the diagram to your right. Yeah, look at the other diagram. When you, we have to change the old habit, we have to change to a new habit. For example, um, you're feeling the same feeling. Now you're feeling lousy, you're feeling bad, you're feeling very, very low. But this time you get up and you go and meet a friend. Or this time you get up and read your Bible. You want to feel good or you listen to a song, a nice gospel song, or you listen to a YouTube video. How? Then you get out of it, you see. Then your lousiness is gone, your mood swings are gone, the, the slow feeling is gone, or you, you, you do another activity. That, this routine is an activity. Or you meet a good friend, have a cup of coffee. Yeah, Starbucks, right? <laughs> have a good cup of coffee, it refreshes you. But better is spiritual, right? Read the word of God. Maybe pray in tongues. Amen. It's the, it's the one stop solution, the Holy Spirit, isn't it? One stop solution is the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Yeah. And what will happen to you? That feeling is gone. That hopelessness is gone. That loneliness is gone. That desperation is gone. That low feeling, you know, is gone. And this kind of routine is what you need to develop, not the other routine. This is the routine that St. Paul is talking in Colossians chapter 3, 9 and 10, when he said, you must put off the old self, put on the new self. Change. Change what? The routine. Change the activity. Three R's. Remember? Reminder, routine, reward. They change. What you have to change is the activity. And the reward is changed. God will bless you with what? When you do this kind of a routine, the Lord will bless you with this peace. There is more joy in your heart. You know exactly now what to do when you hit another, uh, if you feel low. You know exactly what to do now. You do that routine. And after some time, that will become a pattern in your life. That will become a habit in your life. You will also tell others now, hey, you're feeling bad. Do this. Because when I feel, feel low and I feel lousy, I do this. I'm out in, in five minutes. I'm out of it. Amen. That is what we should do. That is what we should do. The Lord will give a reward. The reward is his peace, his joy, his love, life. That is the reward. That is the power of developing a habit. Remember the reward. You know, we are talking about the reward. What is the reward that the Lord will give us? Is written in Hebrews 11 verse 6. In Hebrews 11 verse 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please God. Anyone who approaches God must believe that he exists. And that he rewards those who seek him. You see, that's why we are talking about habits that are biblical, habits that are gospel values, habits that are positive. When you develop a positive habit, for example, when you're feeling low, if you read your Bible, God will reward those who seek him. If you pray in tongues, God will reward those who seek him. Because you want to change your feeling, your mood, and make it positive. This is the reward that God will give to every person who seeks him, who seeks him diligently and want to change the negative habit. Habits have to be developed, right? That's why it's a repetitive action, right? Habits have to be developed. Imagine, I put here, uh, how, how habits are developed, if you can look at your screen, desire. The desire, for example, to pray. I'm just saying, yeah? I have a desire to pray. But if you want a desire to pray, then you need knowledge to pray more. You see, knowledge is very important. That's why Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You see that? So, just not enough to have a desire. If you have a desire and no knowledge, you will still be where you are. <laughs> Why people are still where we are, wherever we go for retreats, we do all this, but no knowledge. Knowledge is cultivated by meditating on the word of God, by studying on the word of God. Knowledge comes. Knowledge. So if you have a desire to pray, you need knowledge. What to pray. Not what, how to pray. Like, you know, not how to pray, but what to, why to. You know, these questions, no? What is a good method to pray? 
Yeah, this knowledge you need. Study about prayer in the Bible. Knowledge will come to you. Yeah, and then skill. You see, skill is practice. Skill is application. So there is a desire, there is knowledge, and there is practice, and it forms into a habit. Then prayer will become a habit, and nobody has to ever tell you, did you pray today? Nobody. It's become a habit. Why? I had a desire. I have knowledge. I'm practicing it now. Application, and the habit is formed. So, I want to give you, to cultivate, five habits for a disciple of Jesus Christ. Five habits, yeah? You're going to go a little fast, that's okay. But uh, five habits for a disciple. Cultivate these habits, make it a pattern. You know, you can add, you know, there are so many habits. Yeah? I just chose five habits. You can choose what you want. See what is lacking in your life. See what is lacking in your life. Maybe the habit, uh, one habit is not working well in your life. Certain habits are not working in your life. Then practice it, you know, um, develop. <coughs> Sorry, develop the, that habit, you know, the desire, the knowledge and the skill, the three R's, the take a cue, make sure, change your activity, the routine, and then you get the reward. Very simple, okay? Look at this. Habit number one is prayer. You, nobody can become a disciple of Jesus without praying. I know a lot of people who come and tell me, brother, I want to pray, but I cannot pray. I have distractions. I have this problem. I have that problem. But sisters and brothers, prayer is a habit. And habit needs to be cultivated. It needs to be developed. Nobody can help you to pray. We can only tell you how to pray. But you must pray. Correct? We can only tell you how to pray. Nobody can pray for you. I wish somebody, you know, we could do that, right? No, we cannot do it. Why? Because prayer is a relationship with God. It's a personal relationship with God. You see, spending time with God, acknowledging Him in all our ways is one of the most important and rewarding habits we can ever develop. Yeah. It's very important, spending time with the Lord, acknowledging Him in all our ways. You see, if you don't have that relationship, that intimacy, you will struggle in your walk with God. Every day, today, you're good, tomorrow, you're not good, you'll experience something, all the four seasons in one day. And it'll be difficult. That's why, you know, I cannot stress it more, brothers and sisters, the gift of tongues is one of the crucial ways of praying. praying and a simple way to pray. How many? I just finished a gift of tongues webinar two days back. We had 250 participants. Can you believe it? You know what they're writing to me? They're saying, brother, prayer is now a joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Prayer is a joy. Earlier it was a burden. I was to struggle to sit. Now prayer is a joy. Why? Praying in tongues. No method. No problem. You don't have to worry about distraction. You don't have to worry whether you have to sit in a corner and pray. The spirit is praying. Amen. So, to help you, that's why I'm saying brothers and sisters, take little help. You know, in, uh, to help you, we are conducting, a, I'm conducting a Gift of Tongues uh, webinar in Melbourne. Melbourne. Yeah. Very convenient time to you, right? 7 p.m. Melbourne time, 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. On the September 28, 29, and 30, that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, make time for it. I'm telling you, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. Make it a habit. Yeah. Proverbs 3, verse 6 says, In all your ways, acknowledge Him, He will direct your path. Prayer is all about acknowledging God in your life, developing this relationship with God in your life, making God your friend. Yeah, this intimacy, this relationship, in all your ways, then you can in all your ways acknowledge the Lord, He will direct your path. You will not put a wrong step in your life. <coughs> so, for all the five habits, apply the three R, the Q, for example, to, if you want prayer to become a habit, okay, for one we will do it, the rest all you have to do it. If you want prayer to become a habit, put a reminder, Q, ah, first start is what? Reminder. What is that? Alarm. <coughs> Maybe you want to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. Put an alarm and disable the snooze button. 
I know all these alarms have this snooze button, highly dangerous button, you know. <laughs> yeah, disable it if you can. I'm just saying, you know, alarm, get up. It's, like, it's a reminder. What? To remind. Prayer. Six o'clock is a reminder. God is calling you to prayer. Yeah? And then the routine. Sit in a fixed place. The activity. Second hour. Uh, you uh, decide to sit in a place that is uh, you know, a little quiet, free from distraction, free from other people getting up at home. Take a nice place. And Australia is much calmer and quieter than India. Hello? Mm -hmm. Sit in a, and the reward is intimacy with God. Remember we quoted Hebrews 11, 6. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And when this becomes a pattern, these three hours become a pattern. Prayer will become a habit. You will enjoy a relationship with the Lord. Prayer will become a joy. And as I, again, you know, prayer will become a joy in your life. Okay. So that's why then when prayer becomes a joy in your life, prayer does not only change things, it changes us. Prayer does not just change things, it changes us. Inner transformation will happen. Inner transformation. What is that? Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. The old is dying, new is coming, old habits are dying. For example, earlier you couldn't get up, you like to sleep, you used to procrastinate, laziness. Yeah, it is dying, new habit is coming, you're getting up at early, praying. Yeah, seeking the face of God. I look at him, look at him and be radiant. Yes, the whole day you're starting with prayer. Oh, what a joy. You know, if we diligently, if we are diligent in seeking God, slowly and surely, we will become better people. Better people. Through prayer, we can overcome any habit. That's why prayer is a very powerful habit. Very powerful. Everybody has to develop a life of prayer. I you cannot make it in the Christian life. That's why I said the gift of tongues is a beautiful way of praying. No method, no book. The spirit is praying. Hallelujah. That's why I attend this webinar on 28, 29 and 30. We already saw this. Habits are developed, you know, through desire, knowledge and skills. Second habit is you have to learn to meditate on the word of God. You cannot become a disciple without prayer and scripture. You cannot. They are non-negotiable habits in a sense, you know, non-negotiable habits. You can all, you can have all the other habits, but if you don't have prayer and scripture, you will still not make it. Your life will become powerless. Meditating on scripture should become a habit for a disciple. Again, we already said the three hours. Now for each habit, apply the three hours. They are the activity for you. You know, make a three hour, the reminder, the routine and the reward. You know, sit at home and tonight or tomorrow, take the five habits and drop a kind of a sheet. What is your three hour for each habit? Do it, do it, do it. Meditating on scripture should become a habit for a disciple. Psalm chapter one verse two says, your delight will be, you will delight in the law of the Lord. Look at that. You will delight in the law of the Lord day and night and then psalm 1 verse 3 says then you will be prosperous and successful you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water which yields its fruit in its season whose leaf does not wither whatsoever you do you will prosper amen that is the word of god so that is the power of the word of god you meditate on the word of god study the word of god may have a systematic way of uh, reading the word of god i would suggest you start reading from the new testament don't go to the old testament now new testament read the gospels the life of jesus christ have a systematic way of reading the word of god memorize the word of god no memorize it at least some key scriptures memorize it Memorize it. The word of God says, Hebrew 4, 12. The word of God is sharper than a double-edged sword. And if you don't know the word of God, you will be a blunted Christian. Blunt. You cannot, you will have no power to, uh, to attack the evil one. To be on an offensive. You'll be a blunted Christian. Actually, if you don't know the word of God, you will still lack power. You can't kill, you can't kill any habit. That's why you see, have this love for the word of God. Love for the word of God. Love for it. St. Jerome said, 
Saint Jerome said, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Look at John 15 verse 4, beautiful words of Jesus. Yeah. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. What the golden words? Jesus saying, remain in me. Abide in me. Abide in me. No branch can bear fruit by itself. You cannot bear fruit apart from Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. You cannot live independent of God. You will dry up. If a branch is not connected to the vine, it will dry up and die. What keeps the branch alive and, and fresh and green is the sap that flows from the vine. The life of Christ must flow into us through the word of God. No branch can bear a fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. It must abide in the vine. The vine is Jesus Christ. The vine is the Holy Spirit. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Unless you remain in me. Unless you remain in the word of God. Unless you abide in the word of God. Unless you make the word of God your home. You will not bear much fruit in your life. You see habit number three. We must learn to tithe. Isn't it? Somehow uh, the other... We have not learned to tithe. Many Catholics have not learned to tithe. Yeah. And we always, a lot of people are in want. Look at this uh, time now. So many have lost jobs, pay, pay cuts. But if you learn tithing, yeah, what is the tithe? You see, tithing is giving one tenth of your income to Jesus. One tenth of your income to who? <laughs> One tenth of your income, wherever you get your spiritual food and for the work of evangelization. Keep that in your mind. You have to give one tenth of your income, wherever you receive your spiritual food, spiritual food and for the work of evangelization. That means your tithe cannot go for charity. Your tithe cannot go to support an orphanage. No. No. That is donation. God wants us to become good stewards. Stewards. Who's a good steward? A steward is a custodian, a caretaker. Look at what God has blessed you with. Can you bless others, please? Generosity. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is generosity. Some Bibles put it as goodness. That is called generosity. What is generosity? Share. God has blessed me. Share. Give back 10%. Give back 10%. Tell God is the, the, the provider in my life. Then God will become, God will, then there will be sufficiency in your life. Remember Psalm chapter 23 verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I will lack nothing. Nothing. I practice tithing. Sisters and brothers, I practice tithing. I'm a full-time missionary. And I want to tell you, for 30 years, I, as a full-time missionary, as a full-time missionary, for 30 years, I have never lacked anything in my life. Amen. Never lack. That is the power of God. Obedience. You obey the word of God. The word of God is telling you something. Obey. Do it. Look at the scripture. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 10. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Try me in this, says the Lord of hosts. Shall I not open for you the floodgates of heaven to pour down blessings upon you without measure? Hallelujah. Bring the whole tithe. Give the 10%. Don't get too uh, calculative when giving back to God. They will, that there may be food in your house. You will never go hungry. Amen. This is the promise of God. Shall I not open for you the floodgates of heaven and pour down blessings upon you without measure? The blessing of peace, peace, peace will flood your home and your own life. Love will come into your home and your own life. You'll experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You'll experience peace, a good marriage, a happy marriage, wonderful children. They are the blessings of the Lord. Amen. Learn to do it, yeah? Point number four, habit number four, stay healthy. Yeah, stay healthy. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Stay healthy. Don't get into bad habits. Stay healthy. Don't binge. 
make make sure you know you know what is good for your life have a limit have to have a cut off just don't binge just don't eat anything i mean eat eat sufficiently but you know don't overeat you know because overeating is called gluttony it's sin stay healthy healthy in body mind and spirit not just physically healthy spiritually healthy too and i'm telling you one thing brothers and sisters i didn't put that scripture here you must write down the scripture 3 john chapter 1 verse 2 3 john chapter 1 verse 2 where john is saying he's saying dear friends i i wish you wish you have good health even as your soul is prospering when your soul is prospering you will have good health so john is saying when you're spiritually healthy you're physically healthy and i am telling you i'm enjoying that i'm enjoying it i'm not on a medication for for more than 5 to 6 years now yeah your body is a temple of the holy spirit take care of your body have a healthy mind healthy mind how important it is so many people are sick in the mind today sick in the mind sick stay healthy pray that's why i'm saying again i cannot stress it what to do pray in tongues it will keep you physically healthy it will keep you spiritually healthy it will build up your immunity system i'm telling you go to the google and see scientists are telling us today that when you pray in tongues your spiritual immunity will increase 30 to 40% nothing will touch your body immunity system will develop you have a healthy heart healthy mind healthy mind your mind will be focused on the kingdom of god amen 1 corinthians 620 for you have been purchased at a price therefore glorify god in your body you have been purchased with a price what is that price jesus died for you he shed his blood for you glorify god live for god live a life pleasing to god Work, stay healthy and live long amen hello <laughs> live long psalm 91 have you read psalm 91 go to the last 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 scripture there and see what it says god will bless them also with long life to bless long life is god's gift to us it's a blessing to us yeah stay healthy okay last uh, habit number 5 quickly It, you must be connected with the people of god that means fellowship look at hebrews 10 verse 25 we sh- we should not stay away from our meetings as it is a custom of some but encourage one another and this all the more as you see the day drawing near what is the writer of the hebrew saying don't stay away from your prayer meetings from our assembly don't stay away from the church don't stay away from the prayer meetings as it is custom for some not for you but encourage one another that encourage one another and this all the more as you see the day drawing near encourage one another please after this meeting you know if you know that some people missed this meeting for one reason or the other call them up hello say we missed you you missed a good talk and then give them the talk when you give it to somebody else yeah you will understand the talk better share it with someone else tell me missed you at the meeting encourage one another don't just say whoever comes it's okay no 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 don't have that attitude you are responsible for your brother you are responsible for your sisters spiritual growth everybody not only the leader of the group everybody take that responsibility remind people on a on a on a uh, on a saturday and say hey today is a prayer meeting don't forget encourage them encourage them all the more as you see the day drawing near what is the day drawing near that the, as you know that the, jesus is going to come again the writer is saying talking about the second coming of jesus it is near it is going to come maranatha come lord jesus come uh, encourage people develop this habit of fellowship coming together as god's people and god will bless you mightily i put this post to you look at this poster we are we are what we repeatedly do correct no excellence therefore is not an act of is excellence therefore is not an act but a habit who said this aristotle he says we are repeated we are what we repeatedly do therefore 
it is not an act but a habit yeah uh, sorry excellence okay let me read it again sorry we are what we repeatedly do excellence therefore is just not an act habit habit it is that's a be careful what habits you cultivate yeah um uh, very quickly before i close what habit should we break free from the old must go remember colossians chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 the old must go and put on the new self some things we have to break also some habits we must break some habits we must cultivate that's how it is then you will you'll become a disciple of the lord jesus christ there'll be transformation in your life new life will come in your life you live a life pleasing to god habits that we should break free from number one you know this laziness can you see this guy couch potato doing nothing pandemic now eating and tv is his god no wonder they call tv the idiot box tv is his god lazy whole uh, uh, his whole days change now there is you know today nowadays you get up at 12 o'clock one o'clock eat breakfast when others are eating lunch you when others are having dinner you are having your breakfast a crazy lifestyle crazy lifestyle indiscipline break free from laziness that's why i'm saying habits develop habits put an alarm and change it around change it around when you don't know what to do don't go put tv only no when you don't know what to do take your bible go out for a walk drink go somewhere meet a friend a christian friend um uh, pray in tongues yeah why not break free from this laziness it's a gym sitting watching television channel after channel they don't bring good news to us they only bring bad news to us they teach the wrong values in life they teach the wrong morals in life we don't want to be like that break free from laziness when you break free from laziness you will experience freedom you will experience freedom and that's what god has come for so that you and i will experience freedom in our life the, ne the next thing to break free from again okay i put this uh, picture again break free from laziness you're feeling lousy you don't know what to do don't only hit the bottle don't look in front of the don't just sit in the front of the tv no what you have to do is look at that change the routine when you feel bad you don't know what to do you feel you know you got a lot of time whiling away your time go meet somebody go to a coffee shop drink coffee or take your bible go to a coffee shop go for a walk yeah reward is what the behavior is changing transformation of life if any man is in christ he's a new creation that's how you become a new creation Amen. you have to change your behavior not enough to pray, pray and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help me, help me to change, change, change. Holy Spirit say, do something, change your routine. I've given you the free will, choose the right thing to do, change your routine. Don't hit the bottle, don't go to just friend's house, just don't sit in front of the TV. Do this, do this, do this. Wow. How does a, how does how do people become alcoholic? This way. Social drinking, just taking one peg. You know, I got a, I got a, 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 um, one of the Gift of Tongues webinar and Victorious Life webinar. One lady wrote to me from Sydney, from your own country. She attended the uh, uh, webinar and then she wrote a beautiful testimony, so honest and nice. She told me, brother, every day I have to drink four glasses of wine. <laughs> four glasses of wine. And now I attended this webinar. I have no desire to drink the wine the wine bottle is on that shelf and the table i can see but i have no desire to touch it amen amen who gave her that power holy spirit and she also has the desire of course you have to cooperate with the holy spirit what an amazing testimony she wrote you know i want to capture it on a video i told her send me a video i'll put it on my youtube listen to it you no know? this is how it change the holy spirit is an agent of change amen he is the god of change amen he is the god of miracles amen is the God of impossible. Amen. Who? The Holy Spirit. Break free from pro procrastination. Correct? You know what is procrastination, right? Putting off things. Deadline was yesterday. <laughs> right? When does, uh, when does friction come at home between husband and wife? Procrastination. Honey, did you do it? Oh, tomorrow. Hmm. Honey, did you do it? Tomorrow. Honey, did you do it? Tomorrow. Boom. Finished. Diwali. Right? 
why we keep on putting off things putting off things putting off things we don't remember something no break free from procrastination is a sin that means your time management is not good develop to be punctual the opposite of procrastination is to be punctual take time seriously honor other people's time honor other people's time you become punctual punctuality is a sign of maturity yeah don't take your time for granted no make the best use of time ephesians chapter 5 verse 15 and 16 says be don't be like the foolish people be a wise person making the most of every opportunity wow don't lose even a minute time lost you will never get it never get it it's gone and i know how many people regret oh they tell me brother i wish i knew this truth of praying in tongues earlier i am 70 i am 60 i wish i said don't worry don't worry you start praying in tongues and god will make good that amen that's why don't waste the time you'll regret it break free from being late again it's connected to procrastination break free from being late uh, punctuality showing esteem for others by doing the right thing at the right time being being punctual honor other people's time that's so important isn't it so important so important don't take other people for granted yeah and you come from india some of you at least no uh, some of you have come from india and don't cultivate this uh, indian mentality you no know, coming late no 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 change it change it that is the power of the holy spirit to change it yeah uh, be uh, break free from the lack of integrity lack of transparency no accountability nobody knows too much about your life aha uh-huh. your life is absolutely secretive yes you come for a prayer meeting hello darling bye god bless you praise the lord nobody knows your life you need to you need to be vulnerable vulnerable no we say you have to be open your life to somebody you know one person yeah it's not we don't make it so secretive you can't live then can't live so a lack of integrity honesty make sure you are honest in all your dealings that's very important brother and sister break free from the lack of this uh, a lack of integrity lack of transparency lack of uh, accountability be accountable to somebody somebody in your walk with god you'll grow in the lord you'll grow in the lord that's why romans 8 verse 13 says if you live according to the flesh you will die you see if you live according to your old habits if you live according to your carnal nature you will die die what spiritually you will die you will get cut off from god spiritual separation but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live you see that is the power of the holy spirit that is the power of the holy spirit if you live by the spirit when you start asking the holy spirit holy spirit take control of my life he will put to death amen the deeds of the body what are the deeds of the body the the sins of the body he will put to death whatever habit the habits addictions you know gossip envy you know he put to death you will live spiritually you become alive alive to god and the transformation will take place in your life zig ziglar is a management guru yeah don't worry is a big management guru is called his name is zig ziglar he says all bad habits start slowly and gradually and before you know you have the habit that means before you know you have mastered the habit the habit has you finish you see that all bad habits start slowly and gradually and before you know you have the habit the habit has you that's how people become addicts to so whatever it is addicts finished the habit is got them. finished closed so in conclusion brothers and sisters habits are patterns that are formed by repeated actions if you repeatedly have a set of time to pray to read your bible that's what will cultivate if you develop repeatedly tithing every month it will become systematic in your life tithing nobody has to remind you you'll tithe you stay healthy 
because you're getting up now and realizing your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we want all of us want to have our long haul, live for long for the glory of God. We can work more for God, not to make money, 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 but to live for God, to proclaim the gospel. Habits significantly influence our lifestyle, isn't it? Habits significantly influence our lifestyle. How true, isn't it? Some people we look and see, we know what, why he is like that, or why she is like that. Wrong habits. Wrong habits, nobody to help them. They couldn't get out of that habit. Their lives are gone. Habits significantly influence your lifestyle. As a disciple of Christ, we are called to develop habits that will change our lives. And these five habits that will change your life if you develop these five habits. Break free from the habit, the unhealthy habits. Break free. Pray to the Holy Spirit. You are praying these three lines so well. Holy Spirit, I love you. Holy Spirit, be my helper. Holy Spirit, take control of my life. Those of you who have the gift of tongues, pray in tongues. I am telling you what you struggle to do or what will take years to break free from. When you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit will break it in no time. In no time. You'll be amazed. That's why I try to attend this gift of tongues webinar. Uh, it is done in Melbourne. Uh, uh, 28, 29 and 30. Yeah, I am going to send you that flyer. I will send it to Steffi and I will request Steffi to put it on your group and you pass it on to others also. No, yeah, that's evangelization. What is evangelization? It's hey, telling people, come on, there's the program. It will set you free. It will teach you how to pray. You can connect to God. That's why Jesus said, told the Samaritan woman, God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Well, Prayer will become a joy. Prayer and meditation on the word of God. You know, tight things, staying healthy. You know, having this good fellowship with brothers and sisters, with like-minded people will transform and change your life. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for this amazing word. Your word really brings life. Evergreen. Every, every day new Thank you for this five habits. Lord, I pray for my sisters and my brothers that they will give them this uh, uh, ability to apply, apply, Lord, to work on these five habits, to work on the three R for habit formation so that the life can completely change, completely. And become better, Lord, become better our lives. So that we can be as disciples, pleasing and living a life pleasing to you. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and to the Son 